Hi everyone, how are we all? So, good afternoon from everyone in the UK. Those other guys around the world, and I know a few of you are watching, so uh, Bob out in Virginia, I've got the other guy, West Coast of Arizona, places I need to get back to. How are you all? Great you've tuned in. Today, a bit of a weird one. We're going to look at, and uh, Ben, you can do a quick shot, quick show there. Just, let's have a look. Okay, let's have a look. No, no, no. Here we have some different Veritas honing guys. These have just come in, they're new. So, my whole idea behind this video is, first of all, we could show you what they are. But from my point of view, I won't ever play with them. Um, you'd think that would be easy, wouldn't it? But because stock comes into here, it goes out quite quick. There's times we're kind of, can we ever play with it? Well, we haven't got any. Okay. Or you could buy one. I don't want to buy one. I want to see if it works. And I expect a few of you maybe have that whole issue of, will it do what I want? Will it work? So we're going to look at a few of those things today, which will be fantastic. So two new honing guides I've got. I've got the Mark II honing guide, which I love on the bench as well, because there's a few things that I don't think we've really ever shown you on there. So we're going to look at those as well, okay? So if we get time, we we'll go to those features. So just going to slide one out of the way first, okay? So let's have the box so I can get this right. This is a side clamping honing guide, okay? So we're going to look at... And on here, all right. So it's got some nice features. This, but what does it do? Will it work? What will it hold? All those sort of questions. And not everyone's got access to go to a shop and have a look and have a play. So quite nice to do. I've got a staff training session next week, which is going to be quite nice because I can show them this. It'll give them a bit of in-depth knowledge on what will this grip. So this, in reality, from my point of view, if I just grab it, reach over to here. It's almost a beefed up version of what I would class as the standard Eclipse honing guide that I've had for years. So what they've done, they, they've changed a few things. We have adjustable bolt. So if I wind it here, easy to move. We have our roller in the middle. Okay, that moves. That's quite nice. That's brass. The main body, which is black here, is a die cast alloy, but it's got a lot of weight to it. Um, it's one of those weird things yesterday I wanted to go upstairs and ask Mark who's one of our engineers is that aluminium or is it something else because it's quite a heavy object the metal bars, the silver here are stainless steel so it won't corrode fantastic to use with a water stone right? so they've made sure that if you've got you know, you're going to get it wet, it's not going to corrode it's not going to go rusty, it'll work and function, the threaded bar from memory is stainless as well so that'll work a little bit of maintenance we can cover later but it needs a few drops of oil to make sure that goes round all right, give it a clean when you finish. We'll look after it. It'll be fantastic. Next thing that's quite nice on here has free grip location. So you have one there, two points on the other side. So the jaws have three points on the two jaws. Very cleverly done. That creates that pressure point, locks it in place. So quite nicely done. We can obviously close it up. We have a higher and lower setting. So the jaws, if I can bring them in, tilt it up a little bit, there's higher plate, then there's another setting lower down, which is lower. Okay, so there are different settings within it. Nice to use, actually. Flows nicely for first impression of that, really good. Roller, not too bad. It's wider than the standard Eclipse side for one, so actually it's got a lot of stability. Bring it round, okay, so you can see how we're, okay, so that's quite nice there, moving back and forwards. So it gives you a brief look at what it is. So, whoa, what should we grab? Select a weapon. Let's have hand plan blade. So I've got four and a half. I've just reached up and grabbed. Just going to take the blade out. Most of us, a four and a half hand plane is probably quite a common object. So I'm just in here taking that out. Get mine. Look, it's a bit fat. That's something I need to look at. Better. So just take the blade out. There. Now, one of the other things you get with this, and I've done a little bit on here, I think then probably four, turn it around. You get a bit of paper, gives you actually a setting up chart. So you've got a reset point. Now, this morning I kind of looked at it and I thought, I don't want a bit of paper stuck on a board. It's tricky to do. It won't last. It'd be nice to keep this as a reference chart. And they do put about the fact you can stick this down or you can do what I did. I've made a hard copy. 
All right, so mark a pen, I take the measurements off it nice and carefully, mark them so we've got upper location, lower location, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40 is the settings. Okay, it's a long list, so we make it repeatable. All right, so I'm going to put that down in here. Okay, I'm going to do our plain blade. I'm going to pin that in place just to stop it moving. That's why I did a bit of plywood, really. I thought it was going to be easier to work on. My piece of oak is just going to make this easier. I've got to open this out a lot to get that plain blade in. Haven't played with this much before. We've got it into here, so I don't even know if this blade will fit. And that's just a learning curve for me. Blade, I've got 30 degree bevel on this. So I'm going to turn that over. I think you can just about see. I'm going to go that to there, over there. Carefully slide through. Now I've got setting for 30. Just going to finger tighten. So I haven't got too much movement. I can come up to my line that says 30, pull everything up. So I'm locking it in place. Let's look on three a minute as well, Ben. That's just, okay. That's there. So I'm using the board as a lamp stop. Come up to. I pulled the jig up. The bit of oak I've got in here, which I can slide about, it's just really to help me to support the jig so I'm not actually holding it up in the air too much or dancing about, help you guys see what's going on. I made sure I pulled this upwards so I'm trapped against the upper setting on the jaws. The upper setting they actually recommend is easier to use. It gives you more protrusion. It makes it more stable. Okay. So, got there. If you find you can't tighten it nicely, and I like this as a feature, there is an Allen key fitting on the side. Okay. So, bring it around a bit. Look on free. Tighten that up. So I can use that, or if you can't undo it, you've got that expert, you can do the Allen key. The other nice thing with the Allen key, you get a bit of control. Don't need to over tighten it, but you get a nice bit of control to tighten that, lock it in place. That's, I quite liked. That's a good little feature to find. I'm gonna move that block just out of the way. And we can sharpen on a whole range of things. Not gonna to concentrate too much on what we're using as a medium to sharpen on. At the moment, I've just bought the scary sharpening board in. We have on here from memory 800, and this is not that it's 25. Okay, so 2500. So we have an 800 is course, two and a half thousand the other side. Checking our blade, I want to do a 30 degree quick sharpen bevel. Just going to use marker pen, helps me see. So I've colored the chip in just a little bit up to there. Okay, black lines. Want something to lubricate with. Now I'm going to use a couple of different mediums this afternoon to sharpen on. So I'm just going with some water. Put that onto there. We can go up and down. Okay. Now first impressions on this. The roller, like I say, is wider than a standard Eclipse style roller. The great thing that we've had for years. And I mean, these have been around for donkey years. This has got a roller that might be 15 mil wide, just over half inch. Oh, good inch, maybe a little bit wider. So it's got quite a bit of stability here. First thing that's important, you've got to do two hands. Where can I put my thumbs? I can locate them nicely on the black body bit here or even on the bar and underneath the blade. Fingertips come over because that's another major thing with this. You've got to feel comfortable wanting to use it. If you've got nowhere to put your hands, it makes it tricky to do. So actually, that's quite nice. My thumbs will fit in underneath and rest on that stainless steel bar. Fingertips over the top. Nice and easy to work with. I can put a little bit of pressure on each corner. Just take the corners off. That's good. Just going to reach for a bit of blue paper towel. I don't know if you'll see this. Um, let's move it about. Yeah, you can. You can see the black line taking it off the very front that's really nice to know that that's given me a nice accurate 30 degrees we're just going to go up to the two and a half thousand we're going to polish now i will say i've started off with something as a really easy blade to sharpen i knew a plain blade should be good for this so i've given myself if you like a little bit of confidence to to use it like i said got these down last week haven't had much time to really play with them, get them out, see what they're going to do. Oh, back out there. We're going to play with the blade a little bit later. Got one other task I'm going to do whilst we're looking at it. Let's slide that forward. Another shot. 
really want to just bring that up. Buff that edge. Okay. That feels good. I'm going to put that on the front of the bench. Let us drop and go back out of the way. We're finished with that. Okay. We did. Nice, easy thing. Let's go back to our setup chart. Move it forward. Get into there. Again, that's just really about trying to make my life easier. Chisel. Got a lot to wind in. One inch chisel, no, 20 mil. Okay, three quarter for the guys over the pond. Into there. Wound it in, let's get it. No, it was right. I've got to get it up on there is where I'm looking at. I'm going to slide it through. Now I'm going up a level again. So I'm just going to set this up for 30. It's easier to work upside down. Finger tighten it to stir it with. Get your position. I can move things forward and back. I'm resting up against the plywood. Nice on there. As I lift it up, I'm sighting down through here. Checking it looks parallel, how it's mounted in the jaws. Chisel we've got. It's got a good beveled edge down the side here. So it holds nicely. It does get in there nicely. It's gripping on the plates. And then looking down through the section of the body, there's almost, like, almost triangle cutouts on the side. So it grips in a bit more, okay? Let me just do move this one out. Bring it back. We're going to do exactly the same. 800. I need to do the back because I've got, got some super glue on the back of the blade. But don't tell anyone. Okay. I don't know how I got super glue on it. I know that's going to be okay. Two and a half thousand. Again, nice and stable. Really easy to do. Just going to do on there. That was quite quick and simple to do. Now, the major thing we're doing honing guide. Why do I want to do a honing guide? What's the advantage of having a honing guide? It makes it quicker, easier. It's repeatable, safer, saves time. Actually, wear less metal away. So everything that you sharpen with a honing guide, you can set it up, make it repeatable. You're wasting less material as you sharpen because... It's actually repeatable. You're not guessing. You're getting a better edge. You'll get a sharper edge. So it's more respondent to what you're trying to cut. Okay. So that goes over some of the reasons why we're definitely going to use a honing guide. Ben's just stood up. He hasn't sat down, so I didn't cover anything in that last sentence of what he was going to ask me. So now I'm really stuck. Right. Okay. Come on, Ben. Okay. So a question from Maria. She says, hi, Jason. How are you, Maria? Good to hear from you. Nice to know you're there. Um, she's saying, do you have the um, Veritas mini honing guide? Um, she said that she's got one, but it doesn't seem to hold the um, the mini chisels very well. Now, mini one, now it'd be interesting. No, is that the, and you can answer the question, type back then the answer. I know they do a mini Mark One honing guide, which is what they originally had quite a while ago. That's designed for really a lots of their smaller little miniature tools they did. And they've done a range of small stuff. So it'd be interesting enough if it's that. If it is that, I haven't played with, but I know it's designed for the smaller stuff. Okay, if you're looking at normal hand planes and stuff, can be one of those things to look at. Okay, I will get one out and have a play if you think you've got problems where it won't grip it. Be interesting to know as well, Maria, what you're trying to sharpen with it. All right, chisels, hand planes, whatever. Okay, and then I'll have a bit of a look. Okay, so that would be an interesting one to look at as well. Okay, at the moment, we've done our wood chisel. Okay, we've got good edge. I'm going to buff it in a minute. It looks nice. I've polished the back. Fantastic. The nice thing is, I've got a repeatable. Front edge, 30 degrees, nice and square across the front. Difficult, again, for you possibly to see. You might see the shine change on there. That's what I'm after. I'm trying to get something that also looks square on the back. So I know it's giving me that accuracy, which is what we all want. Then I started to think about this, and I have had a bit of a quick play with this. But let's just go, I think we'll go to three. Got some different chisels. But chisel. Japanese chisel, three mil or one eighth beveled edge chisel, but it doesn't have much of a beveled edge. Now I've got these because actually, and this is one of the reasons maybe if you want to do this, I can get the butt chisel in there. Okay, I can bring it down to, and let's have my chart back in here, the lower level, because it's shorter, it will need to come down a bit. 
All right, and this is their recommendations. So therefore, bring that up. Get our position. Anyone here? I'd want 30 degrees. Now I can just get up to there. Okay. And again, this is one of these things that I cut over and over, but this is good for you to know. Now with the beveled edge chisel, this is the back here. You can see the tooth that grips it right up to this corner. But look at the shape of the chisel where it starts to curve away. So I'm getting it. Once I start to lose a bit of material and I've got to move the chisel forward, how is it going to grip it? I've got probably a good three eighth of material though before we get to that point. So you're going to wear a lot away before you get to there. You will have taken three eighths off the front. So at the moment, yes, it will grip. Once I get up to here, and this is where the curve starts on the back, I'm losing that accuracy. So one of the things I did want to look at was things like, will it hold short back chisel? It will, but you've got a certain life expectancy, but that's quite a lot of life on a butt chisel to wear three eighths of an inch away. You're going some, okay? Japanese chisel. Now, the Japanese chisel we looked at when we mentioned it the other week has a beveled edge side. They vary in thickness down here. They're a little bit handmade. They have hollow back. Let's do the same thing. So to there, slide it in, okay? I want to be lower setting. Now, making this look fiddly, because actually, it is to do what we're doing. Now, Ben, can we just, I know, I know you've just stood, uh, okay. Can you just go to there for me? Go to four. I don't know if you can see, the chisel isn't parallel to there. So the thickness of the chisel varies coming down the body. I'll take it back out. So it won't hold in the lower set of jaws, because this chisel here varies in thickness down from here. It gets thicker. Nice, chunky, more strength, more support. It won't go underneath the bottom jaw plate and hold in that location. I can't go to the top one because we're definitely not going to get enough protrusion out of it to get our 30 degrees. So Japanese chisels, if you've got lots of those and you're looking at something you want to sharpen them with, you're going to struggle a little bit. I can get to there. Let's have a quick look, see if I can tighten it up. Okay. And this was part of the reason of doing this. It's a learning curve from my point of view. No, it won't hold. Okay. So I can't get enough protrusion on the higher set of jaws. The lower ones, it won't fit down in the jig or the holder enough nearer to the roller to locate it and grip it. So the Japanese chisel is a no-no on this, okay? And that, that's informative. That's useful, not just for maybe your customers, our staff as well, because we you know, love to sell stuff and I want to know if things work. And from my point of view, it's great to know and I can say to them, right, Ben, come on, let's have your question. Let's go to one. Okay, good. So it just um, went off the off the screen there. Um, where are we here? Um, so there's a question from from Martin. So Martin says he has the scary sharpening system. Um, how long roughly do the abrasives last? Okay, need to keep it clean is one thing. Okay, depends what you're using as a, a lubricant. Water can be really good. At the end of the day, clean it, wash it off. Um, you can use the diamond lacquer fluid. Is that good? That'll help clean it out. That's really good. If you leave the material on there that you're cutting, yes, it dries and it clogs the paper. Soapy water will help, okay? As long as it's still cutting, you will know because you're removing material. Marker pen's a really good way of sharpening. Um, all three of us use that definitely when we do the teaching side to help demonstrate what you're removing. Even from my point of view at home, though, I go with a colour marker pen to make sure I'm catching what I want, get the accuracy I'm looking for, 30 degrees. That can be a good way to be sure to see it. But at the end of the day, clean this off. We, I put new paper on for this session today. All right, What I have was getting a bit funny colour. I've occasionally used chameleon oil. Look at the colour. We've shown one hand plane, one chisel blade. I need to wash the residue out the way, okay? Or yes, it will dry to a film and stick to it, okay? So the paper does last a long time. I'm quite shocked how it does last, and it's plastic-backed, so it doesn't break down, will last a long time. Okay, Ben. Okay, and then Maria's got back to us about okay. uh, um honing guide. It yep. was the Mark One yep. that you so suggested. The mini one. Yep. Okay. Yeah, the, the mini honing guide and the Veritas mini chisels. Okay, shoot um, with so that, okay. All right, that's an interesting one. I will have a look if I get a chance, but I know it should grip it. Um, that's very similar to uh, the Bridge City one that Greg did after. Now, 
it's a bit of a shame because Veritas stopped making the Mark One Holy Guide for, if you like, normal sized holes. And then they've done a mini version. It's not something I've had a play with, but I will have a look and see what I think for you, okay? Um, but yes, it needs to grip it. Okay, come on, Ben. And then a question from Tom. Um, he's asking, uh, well, he says, hi there. Um, he has the blue plastic handle Stanley chisels. Okay. Um, and they are, um, they're quite thick. Yep. Um, and it won't fit. Um, the Eclipse Guide has um, problems gripping it. Okay. Um, so, would this be a good alternative? So just as a, if they're thicker this way, right, but nothing too. If they're thicker here, no, that's a bit like the Japanese shuttle. That could possibly cause issues, okay? Um, especially with this. Likewise, we're going to look at the small chisel in a minute, which I think is going to cause issue. The Japanese one's definitely thicker, okay? So Japanese one's definitely thicker down through here. And that does make a difference. But let's just get a four for me, can you? Because I'll probably show most of the Japanese chisels a lot thicker when my fingertip is here. And with the shorter length, won't hold on that jig. All right. If we go to something like a mortar chisel, very different. All right. My aim actually by the end of the day is hopefully get through to that and do that one. Okay. We'll see where we get to because we've got a couple of things that, likewise, I'm also going to try and show you how maybe you can do scoot chisel. And this is a pairing chisel. These are I had in the drawer, and I played with some the other week and went, wow, why didn't I think of that before? So we might have a play with those. We'll see what we get to. But normal chisel, we know we can do in here. Little three mil chisel, okay? And thickness of the chisel really does play a part in it. Um, this I'd probably need to do upper setting if I can. I'm going to put it in. Don't need to hold it or actually set it up to do. I can see I can get my lamp. That will grip in there really nicely, okay? That's held nice. That's upper setting. I can bring it back enough to get to 30. We're in the right place as guesswork goes. Just going to come up to my sharpening board. I'm not going to move the bit. That's good. Um, I've been nice thing. I'll bring this back in. With using a honing guide. Especially with small chisel, it makes it more controllable. Now here, I've got to concentrate. I've got a little bit of tilt if I'm not careful that way. I'm naturally right-handed, tend to probably be a bit too dominant. So I brought my fingers in line with, that's not too bad. Just want to check. Yeah, sitting square, okay? Just want to make sure it's sat square in there. Now when you get down to something like a three mil chisel, they don't have a beveled edge. Seeing so you know what's going on. She used a bit of black, but a bit late now. It's wet now. It won't stick. So back and forwards. Really tricky to sharpen smaller chisels. That's a bit cumbersome there. You've got a lot of weight on this, so it'd be easier to take it out to do the back. But it will do that. So at the moment, we've got those that will. We know it did the butt chisel, but it's a bit on the line of where it'll go. Okay. We know how to do a hand plane blade. So let's move blue out of the way. Um, Construction-wise, like I said, really nice, quite easy to do. Quite small as a size. You can obviously bring the jaws up. You should get the protrusion, though. You can see how much longer things come now. Look. So I'm just trying to think of, if I store this, you're not going to gain any, any length by winding it in or out. It's just time. You could clip it nicely on a wall. Little bracket or hang up nicely, so that would be good. I'm just trying to again think about what you do with it when you're not using it. So, quite impressed by that. I love the weight. This is quite a okay. Um, me and Ben were playing with his, his catapult a minute ago. So, if I throw this at you, can you catch this like I cut? No, okay. So, no movement, nice and easy to work with. It's actually quite like that, okay. Um, we can do away with that. Let's do the other one then. All right, so hopefully that's explained. All right, the side camp, side clamping honing guide is what they class it as, okay? Well, let's see, it's new to us, so it's fantastic I get a chance to play with it. This thing, going to put it together. Got there. All right, we'll model it a little bit. This is short blade honing guide, okay? Now, in simple, you wanted my view on this. This, move a few things, quick room, is what spoke shapes have been waiting for, okay? 
Now, if you know of anything about trying to sharpen a spoke shave, wow. Okay, got different models here. Got some of us. Okay, take. Oh. Problematic to sharpen. Um, those of you that tuned in yesterday, Ben did uh, his Arbitech thing. We had Windsor chair seat there. We did lots of stuff with these when we did the seats. Lots of cleaning up, the arm bows, the top bows. Oh, wow. I would constantly sharpen spoke shape blades. Really tricky to do. So different shapes can play a real part in this. How they can be held, what they are, different thicknesses, all causes few issues. And there's nothing really on the market no, it won't. I can guarantee it. It's too small before I even start. And we didn't cover it. But if you look at where we go back to the holder, it's not going to grip it. There's not enough protrusion on there to get anywhere near that limb. I've got to be back on the third teeth. So there's nothing out the front coming out nicely that's going to grip or protrude enough. So if I come too far this way to grip it, I've got nothing stable to hold. So problematic to sharpen. They came out with this. So two components this one has logo 30 degrees eighth three sixteenth and quarter okay other side has 25 eight three sixteenth and quarter okay so it has measurements it has a degree angle on the back here there's like a hollow tube i come in with my fingers so i can run it down there you can see it if i'll move it about gently okay other side you've got the step on the front okay Hopefully you've seen that. We'll see a bit more on the bench in a sec. So I'm going to put it down there. We want, ooh, 30 degrees. So I'm going to flip it over. 30. All right. That's that bit. We're going to get our blade. We might do two. We'll see. On here, what does this have? Again, nice weight. It's a die cast alloy. We have brass wheel in underneath that runs. Your little brass bits here are the bolts that come through. Cut out section. We turn it over. This side of those brass bolts I sort of built, they undo. We have these adjustable clamps. Bring them up a bit. You can see how things move. Also on the body, we have 25 of a corner, 30. So we've got to line up the right side where we want them. We want 30. So I'm going to bring that back in. I think, Ben, let's have a look on three. Let's see if I can get it on there. I can put, let's just line things up. Uh, around that way a bit you can probably play around where that's better we've got your hollow tube thing here the steps are on the front i'm going to drop the roller into there that was simple wasn't it so it gives you a location to put it in i'm going to bring the arm back round a minute hook them up my blade i'm going to put down and slide it in into there Okay, so you can see what I've done there. I'm coming right down. I know my blade is eighth of an inch. I need to bring the arms over. I can clamp these in. One side, do the other, pin it in place to there. So you now have your setup stop is there. Your roller is back in there. That locates it. If we have a thicker blade, so this is one eighth. So you could do hand plane blades in this. You look at your thickness. So if I went with a low angle plane, the blade's a quarter inch thick. I need to come up to the quarter inch step. If I want to do a 25 degree angle. You've got to do the other side and make sure you're correct on the location on the jig. So that bit's quite simple. Go back into our, our scary sharpening board. Pen. Ah, now I've just done, but we're going to do it. Let's have this on here. Now, I'll play with this a little bit. On the body here, where we've got our lift up, come up a little bit. We've got our blade. On here, there's a rubber strip along here where the pencil is. That stops in sliding. So there's one on the front. There's a serration groove effect on here in the die cast metal. So that locates and stops swing sliding about very cleverly for tail. Quick check over. It looks square in here as well. That's a good visual check. That looks nice and easy. Now, I know I tried this the other day. This caused it a problem. I can feel it doesn't feel right. And this is one of the reasons I want to do what I've got. Scary sharpening board, really wide paper. Can you see? Oh, careful. Bring it up. There's a line here. 
think you can probably see it. Because, and this isn't in the manual, this has these little triangular blocks. There's one there, one here. They have little support barriers that makes contact with my blue paper before the blade does. All right? So, or exactly the same point, probably. So if I use it on a scary sharpening board, yes, I'm going to wear a bit of material away here. So in reality, I need something narrower to sharpen on. So I need something that will fit. Okay. And this might be something you need to look at in between there. That does. Good. So 800 grit. Back a bit more. So I can change my water stones about a little bit into there. Right on the edge, it should be over a bit more. Okay. But that clears those little triangle supports. That's one thing that I did know a quick play the other day. That if I use it on the scary sharpening system, it does mark and catch on the side bits. Um, one, 800. Want to go fine, a grit nail. So push forward. Oh. Uh, Japanese water stone. I only need three or four swipes on there. This is my 6,000 grit stone. Much finer finish. One thing I have got to do, how much clearance have we got? This could be interesting. I'll take it upside down. Tricky to do on here at the moment. All right. Think then, just look at three. Let's just tilt that stone. I want to take the bearer off the top, but tricky to get too big because I've got a little location point where the clamp is. Not a lot of support. So at the moment, I will be better off coming back to here, up and down. Getting my edge again with this. How does it feel? This has got not bad size roller, as long as I keep my hand pressure equal. If I don't, and I try and do it one-handed, you're more likely to tilt. If you want a bit of camber, yes, you can add a bit of tilt. Feels easy to use. I've got good locations for my thumbs on the back here. Really nice to have somewhere to put those. Get my pressure equal. Get It just feels right. Um, ben, that's just an interesting thing I've done. Just go back to one for me. Let's have a look on here. Let me check my fingers and do that. That feels good putting my hands around here. You're making a heart shape with your fingers, if you like. Okay. We'll do the other way, and I'll bring my arms over the top. Look at how my elbows come into my body. That's not comfortable. That doesn't feel good. So actually, this gets you to present that nicely and how it's used. All right. So quite easy to do, though. We'll change your blade. Undo your clamps. We can do the back. Out of there. More access. So quick and easy to do. I'm drying up a bit there. So let's do a little bit of flush. Keep that wet. All right. So we can do the back. We can do the front. That's quite easy. If we slide over, go that way, but we're not blocking. Still 30. This is thinner blade. This is our rider spoke shaves, things like the Stanleys, the records that we get over here. Again, exactly the same setup. I've got thinner blade less than eighth of an inch. So I push it in, check I'm stable on there, push it down, and do my two clamps. Check I'm on 30 in the holder. It says 25 in the moon. 30 is facing down. That's good. We can do exactly the same. So, your spoke shape, really tricky thing to sharpen. Would work with things like block plane blades. They can shoot up through. Um, spoke shapes are really what I would consider the best thing you're going to use this with. Okay? And it is one of those problem things. I know Ben, when we started, you know, was sat there nodding in agreement because he knows how tricky these are when we've done the chair courses to try and do. Let's have a quick wipe off. Uh, not bad, a little bit more. Bit of flush. Only thing that I can see as restriction on this is your stone width. So uh, that I, I've, I've mentioned now. So someone's going to say, I've got 65 mil. On between there, you've got about 68 mil between where the triangle points are. Okay. So 
is something you need to look at. They become you can feel them a little bit when they come over. I don't know if it'll matter if you wear the tops of them off. That's good to do. I need to wipe off the residue. I don't want to contaminate the other stone. 6,000 grit. Back and forwards. Again, it's all about making it repeatable and controllable. Take the blade out. I know I can do that back there. Okay. Not too bad, though. For a second, just going to put the water stones just out of the way briefly. Quick clean. We'll put a few tools back together. Put that back over. All right, so. What do I think? It grips the blade nicely. Really good for spoke shave blades. And those of you that sharpen uh, a spoke shave will know the problems of Occasionally in here, what did I use before? A clip toning guide. Veritas have done, and this fitted in their Mark I honing guide that they no longer make in a full size. So this doesn't fit anything at the moment. I can get it to fit in here. This holds the blade with a magnet. But it's not too bad. I've got to get it back. It does grip it all right. Occasionally about the issue where the blade will jump out, the magnets won't hold it. Biggest problem I find is getting my protrusion lamp set up right. Now, the spoke shapes in here seem to vary a lot if you take different blades, but different lamps. Trying to get a 30 on those can be problematic to set up because the blades are different sizes. All plays sort of issues. We got by with it. This hadn't, when I started looking at it the other day, it was up to something like a 38 degree blade angle because it's come back so much in length, a lot shorter. That's not too bad to use, okay? But I do leave it, and Ben will tell you, it's probably over the years, I think I've probably shouted at a few people where they've gone to take it out. No, leave it set up, okay? So I do leave that one purely as a setup thing. Quite nice with the magnet because it clips the blade. Veritas ones are really easy because they've got flat back. Once you get into some of the other manufacturers, they have a curb bet, you can get this movement issue. Okay, so that can rock about. That can be a problem. But that solves it quite well. It gives you something. You've got a setup guide. Thicknesses will do more than just a spoke shape. Come on, Ben, what have you got? So a question here from Frederick. Um, he's asking, can you use oil when sharpening? And if so, um, what viscosity? Okay, you can obviously get anything. You get oil stones. Do they use an oil? They will use a certain type of oil. You get things classed as honing oil. Be really good to go with. Um, this will shock you a little bit. If I want to sharpen with oil in here, I go with the camellia oil. Especially on the blue sharpening paper. I can use it on there. It's quite nice. But the reason I like that, it resists the rust. You're not using, you know, so that's quite a nice one to go with. It's not toxic. So you can use a little bit. It goes quite a long way. Were you water stone? No, you definitely want to use water. All right. Um, even on the diamond stones, occasionally I will use the camellia oil. That those you'd be better off with the specialized lapping fluid. They're designed to actually go with the diamond thing. All right. So it helps clear that diamond out, helps slush it away. All right. So, yes, you can go with oil. Um, good point, I suppose, really. While we're talking about that, Frederick, you kind of, you know, um, oh, four, Ben, I think. I'll get my hand in the right way. Now we've got, I've got to come back in. Got that roller. And one of the things they do say you need to flush it with a light oil to clean it out. Now, ideally, you know, I've done a couple of squirts, turn the wheel by hand. That'll get the oil to run underneath. That helps the glide. Do that once in a blue moon, fantastic, okay? If you're using it regularly once a week, little squirt of oil will be good. Now, the other good thing we're using the camellia oil, obviously stops any rust appearing, all right? So I can do the same on here, tiny little bit, just help those glide. So the camellia oil can be good for that. That's a weird and wonderful little thing to use in there. Okay, Ben, what else you got? Um, so Martin's asking, well, Martin says he has two old marples draw knives. Okay. Um, what's the best way to sharpen them, please? 
to have their, a long draw knife. Go for a walk, mate. I'm not really leaving you guys. It's here somewhere. I think, uh, I think I put them. I moved things about the other day up there. Okay, bear with me, guys. I'm coming back, all right? Um, I promise you, all right? Okay, we've got a smaller one, okay? How do I sharpen these? These can be a real pain. If they're longer again, which from the impression and what you've just said, they could be longer. They're probably going to be thicker. You can get away with going with something like a water stone, and I would finish off definitely with a water stone. I finish off with a leather strop. If they're badly chipped or damaged, you need to find somewhere grinding it. Bench grinder is a bit aggressive. Linisher would be better. Most factories actually that are making tools use linisher, so a bit like we do our ultimate edge, exactly the same sort of thing. Belts is better. It'll generate less heat. Tormek would be good. Okay, if you know anyone with Tormek, you could grind that back. That's going to be a slow process, but it's not going to cause any heat. And heat damage on these is quite problematic because it's a high carbon steel, not high speed steel. So if you blew the edge, you damage it, it won't hold its cutting edge. So if I'm going to sharpen these, you know, that's been my red board, look. I oiled all, I all my workbench every week and trying to make it look good again. Can be problem today. I almost need to work down it. All right. I'd be better off putting myself back in my rubber holder. But you get the idea of what I'm doing. You've got to work by hand. You can go away. I can slowly come towards me and feel what's happening. Okay. Other good place you can do is the back edge. Keep that clean. There. Okay. Once I've done one grade, and again, marker pens are a really good way of working because it will highlight what you're doing, get you feel comfortable. Tricky to do with anything motorized. The old guys used to sit down. These ones are a bit tricky because they're thinner and rub the stone on there. Okay. Bend down a bit there. Okay. And they rub the back of the blade. You can do the front. Quite tricky to get right. All right. So you need to sit down, concentrate on it. Don't rush it. It's worth the effort. Once you've done it, look after it, okay? So in other words, don't go throwing this in your toolbox. Don't allow it to go rusty. A bit of Camilla oil will help protect it. Something as a leather strop is good to put it in or a leather case. Other thing, if you've got the bigger ones, what could you do to protect the edge? Piece of pipe lagging. That's a really good way of protecting it. You can put it in, means you don't cut your fingers. It stops the edge getting damaged. You spend all that time sharpening it, keep it sharp. Regular top-ups are keeping it sharp. It's best to tip there as well, because if you don't top it up, it's going to be harder to maintain it. Keep it going, all right? So, Ben? And then Paul's asking um, about uh, finishes. He's asking, what finishes would you recommend for an African blackwood um, on, a, on a pen? The outside? Yeah, exterior? Ooh. But if you've got to go with something like an exterior oil, so things like the Osmo oils, which are exterior. Oh, um, no. Sorry, Jay. Um, for a, um African blackwood uh, pen. Oh, pens? Yeah, yeah. Uh, ooh, let's have a think. At home, if I was doing it, I'd probably go with a melamine lacquer. Okay. So you could spray it. The other good way, which if you've watched us do the stuff regularly, we use the buffing wheels. So the polishing mops. That's a really good. So I go with cellulose sealer and then I go to the mops. Go careful how you hold your tube. You can hold it on the mandrel, but don't touch the steel parts on the mops or it will turn the mops black. Okay. On the African blackwood, it's not going to be too much of a problem. But when you start putting other woods on that are lighter, the black will come out the mop and stain it. OK, so try and keep that away from there. But you can hold it on the mandrel to buff it. A piece of dowel can be good as well, but you've got to stop it spinning. It's got to fit tight. All right. But I would probably buff them or spray them with a melamine lacquer. All right. Some pens I did a while back, I made up what I would class as a nail board with lots of nails coming up. Stacked all the tubes on, sprayed them all, rubbed them down, do it again. That's a real hard wearing thing. Or as we said, the buffing. If that actually lasts sort of thing, things like friction polish will get drawn into the pen too quickly. It goes dull too quick. All right. Okay. Good. Right. So just going to recap. So the short one, I wrote a few things we've said about the speeches. Definitely great for spoke shapes. It will do things, thicknesses. You said eight, three eighths, 
All right, so really three to six mil thick is the main things. Um, scary sharpening, definitely a no-no because you touch the sides of it. But chisels you can get away with, they will hold in there. That will work, okay? Right, so we've done those. I'm going to come down with this a minute, okay? How are we doing? 45, oh my God. Got to get going a bit. Those of you that know... And watch this regularly or no, I love this. Okay, Mark II Honing Guide is fantastic. Okay, this has setup jig on here, basic hand plane. If you haven't looked, this is really good. I love this. Let's take the setup guide. This is the bit we're taking off that will do hand plane blood. We'll see where we go. That'll come off. I'm going to want it back on. Ben, could you do the other thing? Can you flip the paper? Just so I can remember what I'm going to be doing today now. Okay. It's all right. It's my fault. All right. So we'll just tighten that up. I've just put the chisel head on. But go back to the plain one maybe in a minute. Okay. Chisel one. This is great. We've already done a little bit of time. I know I can go from really small, okay, to there. Setup guide I can use on here. We've got yellow dot. Yellow is 30 on here. Again, we could do a whole session just on this. So in other words, this is the setup guide. It has a slide dovetail that comes on 30 degrees. I can move on there. I have three settings, red, yellow, and green. I'm working on yellow, which will go into there. Turn it back over. Just going to pin that one on. So I tighten up the bolt top, slide it up. That gives me a way then. I'm trying to be quick with this. This is recapping stuff I've done before in the past. Some of you are going, I haven't watched that. So easy to do. Go back and forwards. Okay. That thing's locked in. That's good. So I can easily shut my chisel. Um, I can remember doing Harrogate show and this is going to look bad. I, I stood around and I wasn't even paying attention. I'm watching things around me. I can do this one one-handed because there's such a wide roller. A lot more support, okay? Easier to control. No rocking unless I really force it. So easy to do. One-handed, okay? So this takes the guesswork out of it. We can come from chisel. Oh, wind that right out. So I'm winding the jaw vise, which is on here. I've opened it right up. We can come up to that. Um... This is a Paul Hogan chisel because that's a chisel. Okay. Up to there. Again, nice and easy to do. So the chisel guide, really good. Okay. That'll grip. We can do both grades. Just reaching over, we can do... Bring it in. I'm not going to set the length. Eh, I better set the length because this is Japanese chisel. Japanese chisel, we can sharpen that in there. That'll hold. That works. Okay. Now, mortar chisel. This goes back to that question you had earlier a bit, Ben, about thicker chisels. Much thicker here. Okay. If we go with this on here, I slide it through. Okay. The roller is here, where my thumb is now. I can move it. If I slide the chisel through, it rests on the roller. As I push it in, it actually turns the roller over. I don't know if you guys can see that. Okay, look at that. So that's a problem. How can we sharpen that? They've obviously done their homework with this. Um, getting cluttered now, look. Cleared area. There it is going to undo top knob okay take that off that's the chisel here we're going to want it back in a minute so if you've got lots of mortise chisels or something thicker that's affecting it they do an adapter so this plate all right will only fit on one way because it has a recess that locates on there all right chisel bit comes on Longer brass bolt comes with it. That goes down through. Tighten it up. 
I'm working on yellow. We could go green if we want, but I've got to slide it to there. I'm going to come back to the yellow one. All right. I think you can see that. Oh, I've got movement on the main body from there. Clicks back over. So there's two settings on here. With the normal one for the hand plane, there would be three. Setup jig, we can use exactly the same. I want 30. It doesn't change anything on here. But there is a reference chart if you get stuck on different angles. Okay? Because you've moved it up higher, it can affect it. I can get my mortise chisel into here. First of all, it clears that roller, Neil. I can feel it does just from what I'm doing. Lump stop coming through up to there. All right. Board back in place. All right. Thump that in there. Come in there. That's better. So, Neil, I can go up and down with that. Again, I'm using both hands, make it nice and stable, supporting the chiddle because there's a lot more weight on this chiddle, much bigger handle on this. Uh, I think I'm free, free a minute, Ben. You can see the size of the handle. It's a lot of weight to support, so I'm using my thumbs to help support it under here. Just get that thumb under there, clamp it up. You can't lift it because you've got that action of that makes that so simple to do again. It gives me a nice clean edge. All right, you're not probably going to see it, but there's tiny, nice bevel. I can feel I've got a nice burr back over and go two and a half thousand, exactly the same. So if you get something with a thicker chisel, that razor block is really good. Okay. We can lose the chisel head. And I will say, when they first came out with this, I went, oh, wow. Okay. And that's really something. Just going to put this back together because they give you longer bolt so that's that mortise chisel adapter come back into there we're going to lose the chisel head i'm going to put that out of the way for a second hand plane one i'm going to put that back on i'm going to screw it in we will go what should we have i'm looking at angled then create some room some of you I'm going to get myself in trouble now. Might have. Oh, sorry, Ben. Skew type chisel. This is a pairing chisel, which is, I have a pair. Have a right and left. Okay. So they're designed to get right into corners. That's why they pair. Great for some dovetails. They can get different sizes. Really tricky to sharpen. Some of you might even have these. What did you call it? What was this tin opener you call it? Do you? Okay, right. So, how can we sharpen those in here nicely? They do this. This is replacing that one. So, take that off. This will go on here. Now, first thing we're going to do, what should we do? Which one do you want to do? Colwyn's one? Okay, more of you are going to have Colwyn's one than that other should, aren't you? Okay. First thing I can do, I put that down, move those then. This here has a scale. You can see I'm moving it back and forwards. Well, I want to create a bit of room, all right? So I can move that back in. If I lay the chisel on here, I can come back and line up with the lines that are coming out from the center of the weight. If I tilt it back to me so I can see, we have got 15 degrees as an angle, all right? So we have 15 degrees. We can move that over. And come to there. Which one is it? That one there. That's good. So I can line up the length stop part, 15 degrees. So in reality, when we come on there, it should line up from the brass pin I've got here to that. Got to change it for either side. Set it up. I know the angle because I checked it the other day. I've set that. So by moving the setting right here, through different locations down through the center you have 35 30 25 20 okay so we can change the angle um colwyn skews from what i can see are a 25 degree angle i can slide if i carefully undo that bolt a bit more which i tightened up to stop it falling apart onto there i can do it up apart from i knew the other way over i knew okay that way there the skew chisel will go through there. 
all the way up, undo it a bit so I can clamp it up, come up to that stop, line up with, if I bring my fingers back in now, lining up here on the front, resting on the brass pin up to the stop point on the collar here, which is black. It makes it difficult to see. So the little hook bit on this corner, you apply, that'll go in. I can then tighten up. I'll turn that over in a second to show you what I'm tightening. And that's I'm tightening these two down. We can take the registration jig off. Check they're tight. We can come into there. I'm just going to check where I am, make sure I look about right. Oh, no, I haven't got right. I wonder if I can move it. Yeah, I can. Yellow. That's better. So from there, I can go back and forwards. Okay, one side, two and a half thousand. Okay, I've done one. Now this will give us a flat bevel all the way through, but you can get a really polished edge. I could do exactly the same for the other side. So I undo, I'd need to change the setting bar. I'm here. Take it over. To there, show you how simple that is. Come back to 12. We said 15, didn't we? I only said 12. 12's not on there. That, tighten up. So I'll swap that over, put it back on, take the tool out, change that over to the other side. Exactly the same. Really good for that. Love using that to do those unusual shapes. The two chisels I showed you earlier couldn't do for years of an effective way of trying to hold them and sharp them. You can, I can do it here first, it's not that amount, 30 degrees. I'm going to come back up a line, 30. Japanese marking knife, this is the 90 degree, but 45 degree angle, if you like, either side. So I want to get that set up, make sure I get to where I want to be, and locate it. Other good way you can check that, it's coming back up on here. There are ways of double checking. That's part of the instruction sheet as well. It's really good. So I know I can get into there. Turn it over. Slide down. That's good. Slide that through. I should be able to get that's quite an angle on this one, which we're gonna is why I want to show you. Where can I get to there? Get the bevel down, Jace. That's better. Grip it. Turn it around. Okay, get this in a bit nearer so you can see what we're doing in a sec. Uh, okay, so you can see I said it's quite an angle. Look at the back of the knife handle. It comes out here across, resting on the brass pin up to our stop plate. I can undo the collar, put that off. Check things are tight. We can then carefully, and I've got to be careful because where the pressure needs to be. So my fingertip, right hand is more important for this. I can do one, turn it over, I can do that, careful with that, I don't know if you'll see it, I've just done, I've got to come in a little bit, tiny little bit, now this has got a hollow grind on here, I've just done a little bit on the front, across the back, dead on 30, so nice way of actually doing that very tip, if I can get that more, it's difficult to see. All right, I've got a little bit there, a bit here. To the other side, reset the jig the other way around so you can do the opposite. So you can do those angles and those funny tapers. Okay. Now, last thing really just to look at, I'm going to have a look at where should we go, Ben, there. This is camber roller. So this will fit in underneath that mark so it has a rounded body. So the belly on here. The idea of that is you can actually use it, if I get myself in position, you can take a bit of camber. So you can roll it that way. So you can do a curved blade. Okay, I'm going to get these people going, what do I want a curved blade for? So my number five we're using here, we've done some of the videos, we did that ash board the other month where I flattened it. We have 
heavily cambered blade. Nowhere near flat. Uh, you can probably see. I hope you can see the curve. It doesn't look flat, does it? You can see the corners are definitely gone. So quite nice to do. So there are ways of using that camber roller to do that edge. So if you want something that's going to do rapid stock removal, I've converted the number five in reality into a scrap plane. So rapid stock removal, much easier to do. Okay. Why do we need to do all this? Because sharp tools are easier to use. Uh, four and a half blade we did right at the beginning. Being sat on the front of the bench there. Tighten it up. I've come back about a millimetre, if that, from the front edge with the chip breaker. Tighten that in. Pencil in underneath. Prop it up. Makes it easier to put it in. Check it locates so I can do, sorry, Ben, lateral movement on here. So I've dropped it in. Got my movement. I'm checking the lateral movement locates. We want not that one. That one there. Need a quick look. Oh, too much. Bring it back. Heavy on this uh, at the moment. Okay. Bring it up. This file's coarser. Nothing the other side, so I need to tilt the blade a little bit. Back over the other way. Back a little bit more. Better. Felt more equal. I'm going to wind the blade back. Forward a bit. No cut. Okay. Piece of ash. Nice. Uh, grain is coming up there. You can cut up the bark. Comes out here. Get up into the... Let's bring this back a little bit more. Hold it. Where do you see from there? Okay. There we go. Two. What are we going to get? Nothing at the moment. That's good. Just checking. Point adjustment. Hardly anything. Going to tighten down cap screw. Nothing there. Moving forward slowly. Temptation, you get impatient on this bit. You just jump the winder. So I'm trying to wind it. I'm trying to show you how much or how little I'm winding. Sign of a good plane. Should be. If I can get it to cut the so. Nice, fine shaving. Combination of lots of things. Good plane, I suppose. Something flat. Sharp blade. That's really important. We're getting somewhere. Look at this. Okay. So, make it repeatable, quick and simple. Wow. Interesting to know, wouldn't it? Not quite there. No, I don't know. Ben's taken. This is over here. Start the cut. Move out of the way. We're cutting the shaving. So it will help pull itself down. If I keep my hand pressure on the front, yeah, it's going to be easier. Nice. Okay. Lovely fine shavings. So if it's razor sharp, It'll cut beautifully, all right? Um, some major thing with this. Obviously, we've looked at a few new honey gods. I was hoping, or maybe, I was hoping and dreading, that people said, what would you buy? Um, we finished off with a Mark II. I have a Mark II at home. If I'm going to sharpen anything, my chisels, hand plane blades, even with my background, I learned to freehand sharpen. i got to get it out. I use it. Makes it quicker, simple, easy to set up. Smoke shake bag, definitely a problem. And again, I've shown you how I've got over that for the years. I love the fact of how that works. It's quick and easy to do. Um, it holds the blade accurately. Gives me good results. That's a problem one. Smoke shapes are like, oh, wow. The side clamp, 
I'm not going to do anything I can't do with a Mark II. But if you don't have a Mark II and you want something that's a bit smaller, a bit more compact, you'd need to make up something as a reference shirt, which they give you the bit of paper. So we've got that. Okay. Ooh, nearly. Okay, that will work nicely. It's quite small as well. Um, it will do your chisels, your pain blades. Won't do Japanese chisels. You can use it on scary sharp. You can use it on a water stone, diamond stone, any of those things. Okay. It's not going to rust. It's not going to corrode. Great weight. Okay. So, yes, if I was looking at changing my Mark II system, I'd go for one of those. But I got my Mark II. It does the job. Doesn't, okay. Difficult answer, isn't it? We're going round and round now. What would you buy? I don't know. Okay. So, hopefully, you've seen they've got certain benefits. This thing definitely spoke shows. Wow. Okay. And Ben, I mean, you, you can you can give me a simple one. You enjoyed sharpening spoke shows when we'd done them as a course, didn't you? He's sat here laughing because he knows it. He goes, oh, no, 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 no. So, okay, it's that sort of dilemma. How do you sharpen and quickly, effectively make your life easier? That's one of the major things, okay? So definitely by using a honing guide, you'll speed things up. You'll get a sharper result. Wow. More accurate, less time sharpening. I love sharpening. Look at me. I can get black hands. Okay. All right. So hopefully it's given a few tips, a few things you might think about what you could do with them. All right. Thank you for joining us. Uh, remember this weekend, there is the big wood turning event in Hakai. What was it called, Ben? Can you remember? Can you get that memory of? Uh, meet the wood That's it. Meet the wood turner with Pat Cow and Ireland. Carl went doing it. I'm meant to be on there as a session somewhere. So we've got lots of that. If you're interested in that, that's there. Okay. We will see you again next week. We'll be back. More woodworking wisdom. All right. Hope you've enjoyed this. Thanks, guys.